Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, Hello. relax, take that midweek break, talk about all the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, and all the other things that... <laughs> let's not stab ourselves in the eye with Cheetos. We were just discussing that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this... Talk to your kids about Cheetos before someone else does. Um, hey, everyone. How's it going? <laughs> I'm Vince Stone. That's Joe Bryant. And that's Pedro Mateus. Yay. Pedro's got a do. Microsoft product. It's hot. I do. <laughs> yeah. It's a I, little it, bit I terrifying. do have a Microsoft product. It's a Surface, but it's from work. So the other side. There it is. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, it's a Surface Pro, the 2017 version, and it works all right with Linux. Well, I, I'm stretching the definition of all right here a little bit because out of the box, the touchscreen doesn't work. Kind of important when it's your only method of input to start mm. with. Uh, mm. Then once you install a custom kernel and you sort all that out, the on-screen keyboard, it it's temperamental at best, uh, finicky at worst. Uh, we were so, talking about that, and I, I was having flashbacks to that Windows 10 tablet I had. It's yeah. Like, it, it, does it does it work just enough to make you angry at it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, you crack open feels. the terminal because you think it's like, oh, I can fix this right quick with a command. It's like no tab button on the on-screen keyboard. Mm. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> okay, fair question. Have you set it down to prevent it from breaking? Uh. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to pick it up again, uh, put it to sleep, and put it over here. <laughs> All right. Jilly Bean, what's new with you in Aww. LA? So I'm actually looking forward to playing some games this Thanksgiving weekend, um, including Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I picked up on a sale at Humble and a few games I want to get during the Steam sale. So, yeah, that's a, I, I just I need a weekend to just play some games because I haven't had a lot of time to do that except the games that we play here on Linux Gamecast. <laughs> right on. Right on. Man. So happy Turkey Bird Day to everyone here in the US. <laughs> I finally... That's tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Hashtag yeah. I, I, was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. that's a thing. <laughs> Dude. Um, so that crazy Microtech edge router that I bought that I've had for like four weeks now, I finally get it to like tag UDP packets and route them, I think, correctly. We'll find out. I mean, if this thing just poof, catches on fire. Mm. I still don't <laughs> recommend buying one, even though you have like small telecom grade abilities with it. But yeah. I, I, that's my little victory lap. I'm like, hey, I did a thing. And then again, I know nothing about networking too. So small miracles, kids. And uh, oh yeah, check right now. We were talking about this. These uh, are five yes. quid, five bucks mm -hmm. plus a few dollars in shipping. Unless you're in Canada, Valve doesn't like Canada. Um, pick them up. They're in stock. They are being discontinued. So even if you're not into gaming, you can use this as a really good touchpad device on a desktop. I mean, that's, with haptic mm -hmm. feedback. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's everyone's first experience with this. You're like, wait a minute, I can control the germal. Oh, okay. Neat. Click, click. Then like it gets boring after that, but still <laughs> pick one up. They're a little bit of history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about we get right into it with Might as well. a slim book? Yeah. Yes. You may remember awesome. that slim book that I poo pooed all over uh, because, let's be honest, it wasn't very good and it was stupidly expensive for what it did. This one, on the other hand, this one seems to be a much, much better value proposition. So, uh, this is the uh, new, um, what are they calling it? The Slim Book Pro X15. It's a 15 inch, as the name would imply. It's got the teeny tiny bezels around the screen, sort of like your XPSs do. And it's got an Intel uh, 9750H i7. It's a uh, six core with 4.5 gigahertz turbo and a GTX 1650 Max Q. That's like the highest end graphics card you can have on a laptop and still stay under like 35 watts. So, yeah, a bunch of laptops, the high-performance ones have uh, that uh, teeny tiny little discrete GPU in there. And yeah, the price on this one is actually very, very nice. It's also got a 2K uh, display, but they were saying that the price... Where are you? There you are. Uh, it's 1,200 euros, 
which mm. is exactly the same price as the i5 version uh, of the one I reviewed. So it's like, oh, oh, all of a sudden, this is nice. This nice. is actually <laughs> really, really nice. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Do you think it's nice enough to make you want to get one? No. I mean, I'll, I'll say just looking at the screenshots, it looks less flexy. Yeah, it does. Yeah, <laughs> and sturdy. this is a 15, uh, it's a 15 inch uh, laptop. So it's, it is a chunky boy, but honestly, no, just because I have a very good gaming machine right here. Oh, that's and right. I have that's El right. Cheapo. You, you, you have a Surface Pro now. You, you don't care about any <laughs> Linux stuff. <laughs> I mean, the Surface Pro is running Ubuntu, so I'm just listening. I'm just that. seeing how many times I can get him to pick it up in hopes that he'll drop it. I'm trying to do it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, laptops for me, battery life right now is like the important thing because I'm not going to be doing anything that's like performance intensive. Mm -hmm. So this one, while it is a very nice laptop, and if you need something that serves as a desktop replacement, that's pretty good. That That's actually yeah. pretty good. <laughs> right on. Well, I, yeah, I was really impressed because it, it includes two webcams, one standard 720p and one for facial recognition. It's it's really nice to have that um, on a laptop that works with Linux. And so that's awesome. And even though it has a thin profile, you can add another SSD, which is really nice. And higher end laptops do allow you to, you know, put two hard drives in there. So it's nice. Um even though it's so slim that you can still do that. And I love <laughs> the Slimbic Pro marketing campaign um, is using hashtag no more apples in Linux conferences because that is a thing. So they <laughs> they are are trying to get that market of all those Linux users who go go to the Linux conventions and are using MacBooks. Do you think maybe they're <laughs> so... trying to get, get the market of the type of people that will burn that much money? On yeah. Laptop? Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's like and, those people know. have money. Let's target them. <laughs> hey, man, make it look pretty. Speaking of yeah. making things look pretty, we can do that with a uh, little bit of glimpse. Yeah. What's that? So glimpse uh, 0 0.1.0 0 image editor, the fork of GIMP we have talked about has debuted and it is a vanilla version of the GIMP without the Wilbur mascot branding and Easter eggs. And, you know, they're going to be, in the future, going to be doing some updates to it and some Speaking changes. Speaking of Mac. But, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't support Mac OS at this time. <laughs> or 64-bit. Well, yeah. No, yeah, oh, you got to use 32. Okay, you still can technically Well, it's just it the Linux. installer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just the installer. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and, it, and it does have a flat pack and snap that you can download now. And I was happy to hear that an app image is also in the works as well, because mm. that is my favorite uh, mm, containerized nice. format. <laughs> And yeah, right now they are very clear. This is just a rebrand. They basically had to go through everything that said GIMP, hit Control H, and replace it with Glimpse. Uh, and of course, some things will break because they're expecting, you know, GIMP. So they had to go around and fix that. But I hope now that they have gone through all that process that they've been automating everything as they go. Mm. Because that mm. is just step <laughs> one. Yeah. You're going to need two through ten uh, going forward to actually get, you know, the GIMP master and then merge all the changes and do everything. If you can just pull the, uh, the GIMP master and just replace everything and do everything automatically, that'll save you a lot of time and yeah. I will actually see a future in Glimpse. Yes. I think my approach with this is yeah. sit back and wait. They did do a mention in the post. They're like, hey, man, we sent like uh, $50 to GIMP. Uh, from the donations that we received and we hope to give them more which i, I think that's in good faith mm -hmm. yep. taking a wait and see approach with this because mm -hmm. the knee-jerk reaction is come on man you're just rebranding so they do plan on doing their own thing but yep. there's a very valid point of which i have had that happen to me personally of like hey have you considered using in a work environment this open source replacement, what's it called? Oh, here we go. Um, right. I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe you've had that. If you had, let us know. Um, yeah. Good luck. Best of luck. This is how open source works. So don't complain about it. Or do. 
That's cool too. That's also open source works. <laughs> you already well, stuck a fork in it. You don't get to complain now. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Good news, everyone. <laughs> a new version of Audacity is here. It's 2.3.3. They are pleased to announce that it will replace all previous versions. Um, everybody's on about Mac, understandably. Yeah. Mac <laughs> Mac made the hard choice. They're like, yo, everything's got to be 64-bit. And then Valve was like, even us, even you, Valve. Okay. But they've done a gang of things, equalization effects, uh, just a bunch of quality stuff. But the big thing, the big thing, I was reading through this, and I was like, eh, nah, okay. Bug fixes, you know, 150 bugs, and all that's been fixed. You're going to laugh at me, but they're like, We've removed the restriction of being able to export over four gigs at one Yay. time in a wave file. <laughs> yes. To which 99.97 of anyone would go, what? But yeah, my-, my brothers and sisters out there, like, I know those feels right. And you're like, really? Why? Yes. That, this is such an oddball restriction. Yes, I understand normal people do not have this you know you don't need to dump out by the way if you're wondering it's about 5.7 gigs for four hours of one of our shows if i'm trying to dump that out as a wave i'm like oh okay i'll just do this with ffm bank that made me very very mm-hmm. happy because that stripped me up a few times mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah and you know another nice thing in this uh version is when now when you export The compressed audio formats, AAC and M4A, there are now audio settings, which is really good depending on, you know, if you want to send it uh, to YouTube or the internets and, you know, you can adjust the quality as as you'd like. And that was a really nice feature, uh, especially since uh, MP4 and AAC are very standard these days. (laughs) (laughs) It's like everything supports AAC. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) exactly. So it was time. One of the uh, the things that, that jumped out at me is like, oh, uh, there were four options that we had that we've basically removed because, well, they were obsolete. There are better ways already in there to do the same things that uh, Nyquist Workbench, Vocal Remover On Demand, uh, mm. and Normalize On Load were already doing. So they decided, yeah, let's just uh, let's just get rid of them, hmm. and they did. Sometimes you have Slim. to kill your babies. That's true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, Cloudflare keeps doing goods, and I'm I'm genuinely yeah. at the point, Pedro. I'm genuinely at the point where I, I'm like. Are, are you guys going to like, whoa, and Dracula or something like that, man? I, yeah, there's <laughs> some things about to drop, but yeah. um, who knows? Maybe the other side of the coin is just as nice. Mm. Uh, but this one is Flanscan, and uh, it's a, well, it's NMAP on performance and hazards. I was about to uh, ask, isn't Flan some type of cake type thing? Like, here's a picture, old it's man. Pudding. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Okay. It's just pudding. I'm glad we cleared uh, that up. The... The, Flan. Yeah, what uh, Flan does is it makes Nmap slightly easier to use for the particular use case of checking your network specifically for vulnerabilities, not just scanning your whole network to see everything that's there and find out what all the open ports are and everything else. No, no, no. This is just for security scanning, and it makes like all the reports that come out it besides giving you all the cve numbers and everything else it makes it very human readable and they they call it uh, very actionable uh, reports so that's very nice to see that's uh, compared to regular ad map that's certainly an improvement nice. and this being cloudflare of course they also make it so you can upload those reports directly to the cloud and i'm sure they would be very happy if you used their services to upload it to cuz money they're, they are giving this away for free, so I guess they are sort of like, yeah, put it on the cloud, you know, the one we sell to you. Yeah. <laughs> As somebody who cuts Cloudflare a check every month, man, good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's something I kind of want to play with, but I'm always scared to play with stuff like that because I know how horrible I, like, I, as soon as I saw that, I was mm-hmm. like, I don't want to run that against this router because I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> setting this thing up. It's probably just... Seeding. Oh. <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, if you actually go look at the uh, documentation that they have on their GitHub, mm-hmm. it's very easy to use, very easy to just point at the network and say, go, fetch. 
and it just drops a list of CVs on you and you go, oh God. <laughs> oh, see, that that's it. The setting it up and running it. That's good. I can do that in a few minutes. Yeah. It's I don't want to see those results. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to die. All right. That's cool. Hey, everyone. Uh, early this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we finally got a kernel. A few people were waiting on. It's kind of a big one. And it's 5.4. Yeah. It's out. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, Linux kernel 5.4 has been released with lots of updates and important changes. And uh, the new kernel now... Um, contains the lockdown mode that we talked about last month, which helps to improve the separation of the user identifier or root and the kernel. And this really goes a long way in hardening, hardening Linux from arbitrary code execution from malicious code supplied by user land processes. And also the high performance, low memory and read only enhanced EROFs file system is now out of staging. And this is especially good for live USB CDs and firmwares for mobile phones and SOCs. And as we've talked about here many times in LWW, this is the first kernel release to include XFAT file system support. Yay! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Microsoft Woo! did a thing and it's finally yes. here. <laughs> yes. You mean I can finally use that? Wait. Yes. <laughs> you could already use it, but you could it already require it. Yeah. proprietary stuff. Now, Blobs. it's in the kernel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of Yay! assume that because my thumb drives work. That's pretty neat, man. Um, <laughs> let's talk some real stuff with it because mm -hmm. that night, it's like, hey, man, I have Debian. Everyone likes Debian jokes, so let's go ahead and compile this with uh, some real-time stuff that I need for the audio, which I did. If you're running the NVIDIA Vulcan beta drivers, womp womp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that doesn't fly. However, the most recent long lived, uh, I think 440, whatever it is, that will build against uh, 54. No issues. Didn't have anything there. What made me really happy was the reason I wanted to try it was this little critter. Oh, look, it matches. Everything's red today. Ah, it's Christmas <laughs> spirit with vampire llamas. Um, <laughs> because. These would not work if you had a Bluetooth controller. It would be able to establish a downlink. It just got hung on the uplink. This has been a known issue since October. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's because they forced uh, encryption on the Bluetooth connections. And guess uh, what the encryption depth on those controllers is? Purple. Mm, yeah, basically. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, the moment that they saw, oh, you have no encryption? Okay, drop. It works now. And I was very happy. We were talking earlier before then. It's like, I never use this controller. And I, I, I'm forcing myself to use it because I, you know, it costs whatever a regular controller is, which is way more than I'd ever spend on something. So I'm like, I have to use this. I have to get my money. Mm -hmm. so, and it's like, really? All right, fine. Now I can use it again, which I probably won't. But work for the real time schedulers underway, which is. You know, you can get like mm -hmm. a low latency desktop premium kernel if you're building that, or you can import the patch set for a pure real time, both of these boxes, um, you know, do the right shot, Vin. it makes more sense. These boxes are running legitimate real time kernels for audio processing. Jackbox nice. is running a low latency because it's not running Debian. It's running, uh, 1804 from Ubuntu, but they do ship a very good low latency kernel, which is also running a low latency kernel on Threadripper. All again, this is all for Jack audio, but they're bringing all of that from the, like the hardcore real time stuff into the kernel itself. So it's awesome. Kind of looking mm -hmm. forward to that. You know, it's going to save you from like having to manually patch your kernel if you've mm -hmm. ever been through that. Then you get to experience <laughs> the nightmare that is trying to get drivers and like capture mm -hmm. cards set up under like hard real time. That's why I don't run like, oh, by the way, if you have an NVIDIA card, there's a secret flag to make the driver compile the kernel module. There's a reason that the flag is secret dude it's like <laughs> secret to where good luck finding it on google <laughs> it's uh if you extract the driver package the run file and you actually go look at the readme it's there uh but it's uh yeah there's a reason that that particular flag doesn't show up very often well you really don't mm -hmm. want to be running <laughs> gpus on the real-time kernels Mm, you can do Intel. I mean, I'm running the Intel uh, yeah, open that's, source. That's yeah. just about that. You also don't be yeah. running black magic 
capture cards, <laughs> which we have three in Threadripper, which I had to test out because in the documentation, they're like, shrug emoji. They're like, good luck. <laughs> I mean, we're not going to say it doesn't work and it never really worked right. So, But speaking of GPUs, uh, actually, this is the kernel that everyone who bought a Navi card, the 50, uh, 5700 and the 5700 XT, this is the one that completes the Navi 12 and Navi 14 bits. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, already got your your hands on a like a 3400G or a 3200G or one of those new um, Athlon 3000, uh, those are part of the, I think it's the Renoir um, APU family and this enables uh support for those uh also arcturus i think it's the mm -hmm. athlon that's on arcturus and the 32 and 3400 g are on renoir something like that also if you have one of those newfangled intel laptops with the actual 10 nanometer uh cpus this enables support for the tiger lake gpus in them so that's nice <laughs> short and sweet real question mm -hmm. Can I plug my 5700 XT, hit the power button, and everything's going to work now? Uh, no, you still need Mesa 19.3. <laughs> <sighs> right. yep. But hey, man, at least I could probably get it to run Wayland. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, well, this person, which I read through the whole article, his name is uh, Samuel Woolage, and I read through the whole article, it's like, oh, pseudo Pacman asks why, so you're an Arch user, and not once does he use the word Arch! anywhere in it so it's like oh very nice mm -hmm. little golf clap so with that uh, particular <laughs> preamble out of the way uh what he wanted to try it was uh he's a big fan of tiling window managers uh he used uh, uh, i3 and when he heard that there was a tiling window manager available for wayland sway he decided you know what mm -hmm. let's give it a try and long story short he tried it he describes exactly what i did to make it work and then it got to the point where it's like uh this is a worse experience than what i was having that so that is a very apt description for everyone's initial <laughs> <Wayland experience>. yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh, he ended up going back to x11 which I mean, this is a story we've heard many, many times. Um, if you, any of you out there happen to have like an old laptop that you've tried to get well and running and you can actually get most of its, the stuff done, it's that point where you hit something. It's like, oh, but I can do this things in specific with X that I want to do right now. And you can't. And then you go, mm -hmm. oh. And then the cracks start to appear. That's like the first one. And it's like, oh yeah, that game I really like to play doesn't work with Wayland. Mm -hmm. Oh well, back to X. <laughs> when I read this, my big thought was that I think this does kind of speak a little bit of, of like in volume to Wayland because this blog post could have been made five years ago and I couldn't have told the difference. Oh no, th mm. this is still the same point. <laughs> five years ago, which is it's unfortunate. like Wayland's almost there. Almost baked, yeah. If, if five years from now, are we still going to be saying, <laughs> it's almost got it down, guys? <laughs> yeah, we need to get past the almost and into it's basically there. <laughs> it's, I know broken record time, let's drop that needle. Uh, it's hard to compete with good enough. Mm. That, that, that is a very difficult foe to vanquish. And and Valve themselves, you know, the people who brought Steam to Linux, they were like, yeah, we don't see the point in Wayland, so we're not going to support it. If that changes in the future, we will reconsider it, but we don't see the point. Oh, that's cute. Laughs in EGL. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, that was... <laughs> One of the things is like uh, you could do a lot of stuff. We were talking like uh, with Pipewire, with you know we've made advances. You know with the audio stack and the video stack screen sharing, Pipewire has enabled that. Even Chrome has given you an option to use that experimental feature. Um, then again, it's Google; they might kill it tomorrow. Hey, um, <laughs> <laughs> but th there's like nothing I'm doing here with X really translate like this entire system would be womp womp you want to do an audio podcast i could probably pull that off yeah mm. hmm. yeah <laughs> good luck i look forward to yeah. 
not being five years, maybe a year from now, two years from now, doesn't who positive yeah. thinking? <laughs> well, doesn't Ubuntu ship with Wayland by default though? Uh, by default, I think it still goes into X11, but Aww. Wayland is there. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> Boo. Okay. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> man, GL. Yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, Man GL. It's a graphical man page viewer based on the Mandoc library, and it uses OpenGL to display man pages with clickable hyperlinks and smooth scrolling. And this is, I was really impressed with this. Uh, being able to use a draggable scroll bar with the mouse is so convenient instead of having to hold the up and down arrows or page up and page down for a long time going through man pages. And uh, it it's really great because it, it auto launches with the search feature. So you just have to search for the man page you want to look at and it pops up or you can, you know, type it in the, the command line, uh, of course, with the... Uh, the name of the app you'd like man pages you'd like to look at but i was just really impressed and it works really fast and it's just it's just nice to have some progress with our man page viewer <laughs> <So>. <laughs> oh come on man pages works fine you know yeah. it's worked fine since 1993 yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> i had to think about that it's like, when did, it, first of all if you're typing man in the terminal you're you're mm -hmm. at your wits end. That well, what I thought about <laughs> is when was the last time I really relied on ah right shortly yeah. shortly <laughs> before I get my first like always on persistent internet connection. Exactly. Like, yeah. You were yeah. using man yeah. before then. <laughs> so <laughs> that books, man. So yes. yeah, locally cached manuals, they they're very nice to have in that particular moment that you know you done goofed and all of a sudden not even the internet is working anymore. Mm. Uh, but yeah, having the search function there is something that I very much appreciate because one of the things I didn't like was having to grab at straws uh, yes, almost literally <laughs> because I had no idea what to look for. So I was just trying to filter down to what I was trying to do. This is nice. You know, a search mm -hmm. function is nice. <laughs> that, dude, I mean, GUIs have their uses. When I saw this, you know, it's like, um, like synaptic like for package mm -hmm. management. It's like, <laughs> yeah. that's my favorite thing in the world. When I need to do two or three yes. special things with that for sorting, yeah. any time over mm -hmm. the terminal, any other time, I'm doing everything in the terminal. But yeah, this is yes. a really cool tool. Yeah. Um, subtitles. <laughs> Who here can oh, yes. read? <laughs> Z Mu. Uh, that just means subtitle in Chinese. But yeah, uh, this is uh, <laughs> this oh. is yeah. It's a uh, penguin. It's a um, a subtitle player that spawns a teeny tiny semi transparent window that you can resize to your heart's content, and you can download subtitles, load the subtitle file, and it's even got like a fast forward and um, skip buttons if you just want to skip to the next subtitle because something is slightly out of sync. They do recommend that you use um, open subtitles to get the subtitle files, but yeah, it's um, it's going to be very hard to find for that really obscure, obscure video that you really want to watch. Yeah. So you're most likely going to have uh, better success Better success. Yeah, that's good Englishing there. Uh, <laughs> if you are, say, watching like old public domain movies on YouTube. So you're saying if, yeah. if, you're, if you're not a hipster, you're going to have a better time. <laughs> uh, well, if you're not a hipster, you don't need to worry about this. Then again, this all boils down to whether or not I can read. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so I can pretty much take it either. Yeah, finding the correct subtitles, mm -hmm. that, that can be yeah. a lot. Yeah. What? Uh, I guess this is uses. Jill, what do you think? Yeah. Well, I was really, really happy about this because usually I use VLC, which is, is wonderful, you know, downloading your videos and playing with subtitles. Like, but I'm this allows... Free to admit, the only time I use subtitles is like, oh, I guess there were... <laughs> oh, let's cut those off. I know how to cut them off in every player. 
<laughs> well, right for click, animes and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, animes that I want to listen to, you know, in the original language. <laughs> this is, it's, it's nice to have the subtitle, si subtitles. So, but what's cool is this allows you to go to any website and view subtitles. And like Pedro was saying, that's if you can get, you can find the subtitles for that particular uh, movie or video. But what's really <laughs> nice is you can change the fonts font size and color of the subtitle text, which is actually a game changer for me because the font sizes on most subtitles played on videos are too small for me to read. And it's really annoying when I want to watch some of my favorite animes in their original language and not being able to read the subtitles <laughs> is an issue. <laughs> Come on, man, at some point you're going to have trans or Z memorized. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a cool tool. Go check it out. All this is going to be in our show notes, as we mentioned after the fact. There'll be a link in wherever you're watching that. Go track it down. Left-handed trackball. We talked about. We talked about it, Pedro. A ploopy. And now, yes, <laughs> yes. I heard you say that word again. Yes. <laughs> now Pedro can have a ploopy too. <laughs> Yes, yes, supposedly I can, because uh, okay. they made a left-handed version. <laughs> yes. We're not talking about what you're thinking, you naughty, naughty person. We, uh, The source code is a completely yes. open source trackball that now supports left-handed individuals. I'm left-handed, but, you know, I learned how to use my right hand like a normal person. So, yeah. Well, your right hand looks like a normal person's. Yeah, my left hand also has no feeling in it because I destroyed the nerves by driving a nail through it. Which, <laughs> yeah, that boy. sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Don't tango with me, son. Um, but we have Lefty Mouse, and you can download all the files for it, open source firmware and build this critter. And Pedro was like, uh, man, I didn't get the graphic queued up, but you know the cat meme? <laughs> well i just need to find a place with a 3d printer now because i am curious like <laughs> this whole idea of build your own hardware is something that i am very curious about mm -hmm. and i don't have a 3d printer i can't afford a 3d printer and even if i could i ain't got nowhere to put it uh so oh you can yeah, order one I'll online to... <laughs> jill it ain't got nowhere to put it <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got no room. Uh, but oh, yeah, it's oh, oh, laptop I see. Stuff. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, but that's those fit on a shelf, a teeny tiny shelf, too. <laughs> you can make a teeny tiny 3D printer. <laughs> that's not going to be very good, is it? No, it'll be great. Dude, come on. <laughs> this, this is not a high resolution project. Also, you live yeah, in Cambridge, no. <laughs> man. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. but uh, there are. I know there are a couple of shops in town, um, like paper shops that have 3D printers and people actually take their 3D printer files and print them off there. <laughs> uh, it, you mentioned in the notes that uh, Cambridge University also has a, a 3D printing society, so mm -hmm. yeah, might be worth a shot. Uh, Nori goes there a lot, so I might have her poke around. <laughs> I, I'm yeah. more entertained going to be more entertained about you finding a way not to do this that is going to make me happier <laughs> yeah well I'm, yeah. I'm still going to have to get the electronics <laughs> oh do you have to yeah, solder there, because i want you thing, to live stream yeah. that because you don't know how to solder <laughs> wait you I, do yeah, know how to no, solder you're just bad practice. it's even better <laughs> <laughs> i do know how to solder i just don't have any practice with it yeah <laughs> where are you on blindfolded soldering uh, does it involve <laughs> alcoholic beverages? We can make that happen. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what do we have? Oh, Blender. RTX on. Yeah. That's the much anticipated <laughs> update to Blender 280. Milestone is here with over a thousand fixes and several important updates that were planned for the 28 series. Most notable are the sculpting tools, overall support for NVIDIA RTX ray tracing, and cycles, Intel open image denoising, and better outliner, a new file browser, and much, much more. Yeah, man, we're talking about mm -hmm. over 1,000 fixes, and I got my attention. Well, got my attention. It got my attention. Pedro, quit Englishing badly. It's contagious. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm always on the lookout for trying to use, like, the 0.5 of an RTX core that's in the 2060. I'm like, come on, little buddy, do something. Dance. And um, 
mm-hmm. might be playing with that. The Intel Open Image Denoising, that's neat. I'm glad that made it in there. And, you know, the file manager. Yay. Yes. Yay. Yay. <laughs> because it's bad. It's right now, the new file manager, it's less bad, but it's still <laughs> bad. Um, What's the problem yeah. with these? Uh, all right. Kudos. Great release, ladies and gentlemen. Back to that 90s file browser that... <laughs> Because you run into this. You normally run into this with commercial software. Oh, yeah. You do. Oh, yeah. And they're like, luck to that version. (laughs) Well, it's like, we need to reinvent the wheel. Let's do our own file. Why don't we just use the one native to the system? Reasons. Okay. (laughs) And this this is getting there. I mean, this is a step in the right direction. I'm I'm looking at you, Black Magic Da Vinci. You are completely (laughs) guilty of this. That is the only program I'll go out of my way to drag things into it, man. I do not want to deal with and it's kind of the same way with the blender i don't want to navigate that monstrosity but they look like they cleaned it up a little bit jill yeah well you know what then it's true of all the 3d animation software (laughs) the file managers are usually you know old school (laughs) so uh that's so true um but what's nice is uh this release includes a complete sculpting tools overhaul for a better workflow. And it has uh, new new brushes for sculpting and new tools, as well as updates to Grease Pencil, uh, which also has new brushes and tools. And um, that that's actually hu- huge because uh, doing 2D animation in a 3D animation package, yeah, Blender was the first to do that. <laughs> so very important. And there's lots of updates to the real-time renderer EV. Um, which uh, makes shadows a lot better, and it just it, it's making the viewport viewports uh, look beautiful when you're uh, working on projects. It's really amazing. Yes. And they also <laughs> included um, Intel's uh, Open Image Denoise, mm-hmm. which yes. is something that I'm very mm-hmm. much looking forward to. The GIMP folk uh, introducing to mm-hmm. GIMP. That'd yes. be very nice. <laughs> yeah, all the graphics packages need that. <laughs> yeah. Do you know is something? Do you know is the video, man? Yeah. <laughs> video? Yeah, sure. The, I mean, you can do it in Blender. But uh, just for pictures, let's say you have a picture that would otherwise be fine if it weren't for all the stupid, low-quality uh, camera noise uh, that you got from your phone. Mm-hmm. Why don't you use yeah. like one of the two <laughs> available ones in GIMP? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because they don't work so well. <laughs> then just import it into DaVinci and use that static frame with the neural uh, uh, yes. AI. <laughs> or, you know, you could just make a plugin for GIMP. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, man, what you've got to do is call an Uber and uh, <laughs> let's just see how long could drag it out. Okay, we got to get into a slice but before we do that we want to thank each and every one of you making this show possible giving us loud live independent commercial free you are the reason we're here and uh if you want to help out there's a gang of ways to do that over at linuxgamecast.com mm-hmm. that support button we've got our beautiful patreons we've got people kicking in through libra pay uh we've got affiliate links with humble and stuff like that what else do we oh we have merch unfortunately we don't have any yes. vampire llamas yet <laughs> um, <laughs> we're developing that technology don't that's worry yeah it's gonna be a thing but speaking of vampire llamas man speaking of vampire llamas hmm. I Go love, on, you can reach yeah it. so <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I guess I'll take this time to uh, thank Artharin in chat for gifting me the game Quadrilateral Cowboy on Steam. I absolutely love it. It's a first-person puzzle game, exploration game, and hacking game, and it's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I got a gift because I put this on my wish zone. <laughs> Yay, Ben! <laughs> That's why this showed up. This is also why I don't put this on my wish zone. This is the stuff that shows up. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. I'm definitely going to traumatize some children and adults with it. Uh, as a thing, first, I don't think, Don, you're on the uh, find up standing cannibal wall. Oh, so, oh got to fix not that. Yet. <laughs> going to finish that last space. Uh, that's kind of brilliant. That'll be the end of 2.0. Uh, but you do get to send a little message, and I read it. It says, hi, Linux Gamecast. Enjoy your gift. Mm, quite the wordsmith from Don. <laughs> 
<laughs> True words have never okay. been spoken. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Still lands you on the final upsetting cannibal wall. <laughs> it does. It closes out yeah. 2.0, baby. That's super oh, yeah. sweet. Um, but I do want to mention, if you are a patron, I'm starting a new series for podcasting on Linux. And the first one's up covering leveling audio. So if you've ever had an issue with somebody's too quiet, then someone's too loud, and you don't have a multi-track audio set up, you too can get everything sorted using nothing but open source software. So I kind of walk through all that, and it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. It's installing the plugin uh, with Audacity and just how to get all that stuck together so go check that out if you are currently throwing some wet stinky cash and making this possible up next will be i'm going to be doing some more basic things like just getting up like a mix minus setup with a basic mixer how you do skype interviews then how to track down we're going to do hardware stuff too how to track down ground loops usb ground loops can be an issue what works what doesn't i got some things planned man so thanks everyone for making that possible i'm going to imagine that's a turkey pie <laughs> yes that is a patience pie <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so this cool. well this is uh this was really neat actually uh someone mm -hmm. um had already built uh jay dosher i guess that's his name uh he'd already built a um a raspberry pie that was supposed to be waterproof and it, he called it the field pie kit and well, uh, a lot of people pointed out some issues with his design. There was no keyboard uh, built in. Uh, it wasn't exactly watertight. Um, it wasn't, uh, well, the wiring was all over the place, the original one, and the connectors were very fragile, and there was no EM shielding whatsoever, and if you're going to be using it out on the field, you sort of kind of expect some of that stuff to be in there. Mm -hmm. So he completely redid the whole thing, um, he started from scratch, still using uh, the Pelican case. In this case, uh, he used the Pelican 1300. Yes. And he made it look really, really nice. Uh, there, The pictures, you can see that picture that it's got like the actual flip switches. Those look awesome. Uh, it was, those, <laughs> yes. uh, you were look amazing. For that. You're like, oh, hipster clicky flip switch stuff. Yay. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, he also uh, found a teeny tiny little uh, keyboard, mechanical keyboard. Oh, uh, no. No, no, I just want to set it on fire. Why'd you have to go and ruin it? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, to fit on the inside of the lid. And since he couldn't really work a way to, you know, EM shield the unit itself, he created a cardboard box <laughs> with, uh, well, aluminum paper. <laughs> and just put it, it in there. <laughs> <laughs> yep, basically. <laughs> and yeah, no, it's the... As a Raspberry Pi project, he used a, a Raspberry Pi 4 with a fan because, you know, in, you know, closed off watertight thing. Uh, it's going to need some ventilation to keep the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 cool. I don't want to say cold, but cool. Um, yeah, the TSA acceptance factor of this one is great because, oh, it's just a Pelican case. Okay, what do you have in there? Oh, it's a Raspberry Pi project. Oh, can you open it? That's that's a bomb. No. That's just straight up a bomb. You can open that fine, because <laughs> yeah. about that time you'll realize that old man Vin has installed an application that starts beeping. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll go, oh, wacky Vin, as you're being drug away to a detention facility not marked on any map. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it looks really great, but don't take it on a plane. Please. Yeah. <laughs> Call ahead if that's a new carry-on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, maybe you have something you carry on. Maybe you're working on a project and you got something made of awesomeness and you want to tell us about it and uh, or just ask a question. How can they do that, Pedro Mateus? <laughs> well, you can uh, just uh, walk up to one of us and politely ask your question or... Don't you try to, to hug me. I have a wool shirt now. It's hug proof because I know somebody that tries to do that. It's highly allergic to wool. Oh, well, yes, I Well, there are also people allergic to... Uh, <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Thanks for that bit of information. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, that's one for the checkbook. Uh, and um, yeah, LinuxGameCast.com, but hit the contact button and there's a form. All you need to do is pick LWDW from the little uh, box at the top and then fill out the form. It's pretty easy. Uh, let us know about your Raspberry Pi projects or any other projects that you're currently working on that involve Linux in one shape or another. We will be very happy to feature those stories, those uh, projects. It can be Linux, right now. it can be Unix, it can be Haiku, OS2. Um... Linux adjacent. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <What is it? laughs> yeah. So. React um, OS. <laughs> Eric writes wanted to try that XFC that you guys keep crushing or gushing? Gushing. Gushing. Gushing <laughs> over. Yes. <laughs> On I get a dialogue box that, sorry, man, I'm just reading it like it's typed, uh, that states my panel is locked because I'm running in kiosk mode. WTF? Question mark. Mate? I might have thrown the mate in. Fresh install on Arch. By the way, I run Arch. So how do we fix this? I... Never I've got that never box. Seen I know you can unlock the <laughs> yeah. panel by just right clicking, going to panel properties, and unlock yeah. the panel, and then you can move it wherever you want to go. Jill, do you want to take a stab at it? Uh, what Pedro did? Because yeah, right clicking on it and, and and unlocking it, but um, yeah. I never got the kiosk mode. No, because I I <laughs> I've never had this happen, so I was puzzled by it. <laughs> Kiosk mode is usually something that's went horribly wrong. Yeah, because that's usually when you boot want to boot it into web, you know. Well, web the kiosk mode is when you just, yeah just want to put it in lockout or use their interface, and you can yeah. run in kiosk mode for a minute and like wait a minute, I want to move this icon. It's like no. Hmm. I'm sure there's got to be a configuration file to edit that you can edit for that. <laughs> Not really <laughs> a configuration I, file. I mean to cut it yeah. on, but if it's enabled, what you got to do um, probably just Google this. Uh, look for your cache directory, your sessions folder. I think it's like mm. .config xfce. Blow that entire thing out because it's corrupted. Yeah, It'll rebuild that. You might have to set your icons back up. Worst case scenario. But that'll fix okay. that. <laughs> I only okay. know that because that I've encountered sense. that. Like, what? What's going on? Oh, you on? have? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but never, I'm, never. I'm in the middle of like... <laughs> compiling xfc with the wrong stuff like i wonder if i can make this one and, and rolling it back and pushing it back in from the packages so etc x there you go right there maybe uh, cheesy thank you cheese bacon i don't know if yeah. it's an etc though <laughs> Um, that's the um yeah that's the settings that it'll pull down if it goes into kiosk mode mm. yeah <laughs> i want to check this out uh clear cache yeah. and Live, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, is your cash it, it makes sense, like fall back, yeah. uh, fall back mode. <laughs> it is under cash, cash sessions. sessions. Yeah. Blow that away. That'll get rid of it. Hundred percent guaranteed. Wow, no problem. Cool. Mm -hmm. Ta-da! See, we learned something. Yeah, definitely. Last but not least, Pedro. AJ Reisig uh, is asking, let me ask you a question then. In the free version, I have to convert MP4 to uh, .mov to, uh, to video clips to view them. Open parentheses, is kind of crazy when you can create <laughs> MP4s with DaVinci. Close parentheses. Uh, is this necessary in studio? Thanks. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's the difference between free DaVinci and DaVinci Studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jill, you want to take yeah. this? Yeah. Yeah. So... Um... Yeah, so for DaVinci, the free version, you you do have to convert the files to bring them in, and um, you have to you have to purchase the studio version, which is under three hundred dollars. It's very inexpensive to do MP4 input. So that was their way of uh, you know getting people <laughs> maybe to purchase the product, <laughs> but it's still inexpensive at you know under three hundred dollars. <laughs> That is 100% <laughs> correct. Um, yeah. I do want to point out that MP4, uh, there seemed to be a mix up between uh, a codec and a container. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it's MPEG 4 that the issue is with. I mean, it could be a .move, .mkv, or anything like that. Still not going to take it in. But then again, you need to ask yourself if you're editing video, 
why are you doing it with something that's compressed? I mean, yeah. you should have a and mezzanine codec like DNX HD or ProRes. Don't use the ProRes built in with OBS, though, because it's reverse engineered and it's junk. Um, yeah. So yeah, do keep um, that in mind. Go ahead. Well, one of, one of the, the formats that I use frequently is a QuickTime MOV, the animation format because it's not quite completely uncompressed, but it's still really, really high quality. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as Ven was saying, you don't, you, you don't want to bring in compressed video, edit it, and go out to compressed because you yeah, lose I do. quality that way. I want it way. super compressed. I want AAC 96 <laughs> mono, yeah. then I want to recompress that to 4, but I'm going to upscale it to 4K and... Um, <laughs> So, uh, AJ Reisig, to answer your question, uh, no, mm -hmm. it isn't necessary in Studio. Studio can let you import or yeah, lets you correct. import. And one thing you need to everything. keep in mind, um, <laughs> even with the Studio version, you can't import AAC, period. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work. But then again, yeah, that's the issue. nor should you. Yeah. You should be recording yeah. in lossless. It should be wave. Now, if you're going to record in Black like wave. <laughs> a mathematically lossless codec, do what we do here. AGVC, H.265 with a main 10 That's profile nice. and lossless, but get a Turing card to crunch those numbers and <laughs> playback is going to be brutal unless you do um, transcoding or throw a thread ripper at it. Pro tip. <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying. Not even uh, hardware accelerated? <laughs> oh, that's with hardware acceleration. That's using the NVIDIA card Ooh. and 24 threads. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and it's pretty smooth, but I mean, then something like that, you would just want to create like a proxy clip. Like you do something in KDE like that. Mm -hmm. I think KDE supports proxies and stuff like that. But hey, man, if you can, use a lossless format to edit it. It's going to be quicker mm -hmm. and faster no matter what you're using. If you're using KDE in live, you're using OpenShot, if you're using DaVinci. Pro tip. Easily yes. done. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we got to bounce out of here. Before we do, we're going to light up a little bit of wub wub. And play some credits. How about that? Sound like that? Yay! You don't get to see your name in the credits. <laughs> and oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 32 kilobits per second AAC. Uh, how do you like them phone calls? Oh boy. <laughs> Man, I used to set up and deploy real media G2 servers. I've been dealing with video for a minute. <laughs> yeah, and Pedro hey, Cheesy, earlier. Thank you very much for the uh, the bits. <laughs> oh, thank you, Cheesy. Cheese Yay. bacon, thank you so much. Yay, bits. <laughs> and uh, Pedro, earlier, I was also thinking that you could, um, you know, send send the ploopy file to Thingiverse and have them send you a ploopy, ploopy already built. <laughs> Well, already made, yep. and then you can that assemble can it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that was the other option. <laughs> yes, Joe, but you, Pedro's strategy is to find a way not to have to do it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, if all it involves is uh, downloading the files, going to Thingiverse, and uploading them, I'm good. I'm yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Instead of bye -bye, buying a 3D player. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> bye, everyone. We love you. Thank you for your support. <laughs>